stuff that I'll upgrade. I'm made of the God stuff. You can just stop God. Yes, sir. 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 Y
Because even with us, I'm not going to All right, turn. My help comes from the Lord. Jesus. All right. Don't start them. Please, please, please. If you just don't know what it took for me to get here today. But I'm here! And I declare victory! I'm not going to 
stop enjoying my Jesus as long as he keep being himself. Lord, I praise you. All right, I'm going to read Psalm 124. By the time some of y'all grabbed it, the Bible been flu in the air. Oh! Hallelujah. Make room for the saints. Hallelujah. Uh, there's some seats up front. I warn you, it's hot up in here. Hey! Keep the fire burning. Somebody say, God is not dead. He is alive. Feel him in my hands. Feel him in my feet. Feel him all over. You didn't intend to do all of that, but it just was like that sometimes. You know? I'm not feeling my best. Don't you? you ain't got to feel your best, honey. He can take care of the rest. Don't you? you ain't got to feel the best. Just use what you do. Yeah. For many days, I come in feeling one way, come in the section where it all is. Feel a burden roll off. Hallelujah. That's why that song was so fitting for us today. We thank you, Reigns, for blessing us. Brother CJ called and asked, and I said, absolutely yes. Praise the Lord. And trust me, I've had folk offer to do things for this ministry, and I politely said, no thank you. Praise the Lord. I'm grown now. I don't have a problem saying no thank you. Praise the Lord. But I knew that would be something to elevate and bless the service of the Lord. And I thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Y'all come back anytime y'all get ready. You don't have to be announced. Just come on in. I saw the radio say, come on, get more y'all. Praise the Lord, because I know what you're going to do with it. Praise the Lord. Now, you know, restoration, no, I don't slide mics. Praise the Lord. I give it to somebody. I think we'll do something with it. Praise him. Psalm 124. You don't have to read it, because some of you are not in the condition for that right now. It's all right. Get the tape. Praise the Lord. I know how it is. I know how it is. Hallelujah. I know how it is. Because see, this is when you really know God is for you. When you yourself give up and you still, still do it. You still make it. When you say, I have had enough, I'm not doing that. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself still kicking in. You feel something kicking in. Just say, wait a minute. The Lord. Say, uh, yes. uh, say that when you can't quit. Because you have somebody on the inside of you that doesn't have the ability to quit. Because he can't quit himself. Psalm 124, if it had not been. Jesus. Oh my God. Jesus. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, yes. tell your neighbor, don't worry about you here today. Don't worry about you here today. Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse number six. Oh my God. Blessed be the Lord. Who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped. As a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. Ha! And we are escaped. Look at verse eight. Somebody say I help. See, when you're anointed, you're just anointed, you see. Everybody ain't anointed to come in the service and sing a song that fits the word that's already in the mouth of the man. Our help! 
Somebody scream loud. I'll help. I'll help. Is in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Thank you, Lord. Bye, bye, bye. I want to talk about a subject this morning. Tell your neighbor, somehow, somehow. I made it. I made it. Glory. God, I love you. I love you. And I praise you for your spirit in this atmosphere. Oh, my God, from the opening prayer. Oh, my God, to the praise team, Lord. Even all our guests, Lord, today. The anointing is present in the room, and we thank you. And we thank you for the word today that shall bless people today, that shall uplift, oh my God, burdens, hallelujah, and shall torment the adversary. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Somehow, I've made it. Somehow, somehow, I've made it. We want to certainly... Thank the Lord for his wonderful blessings to us. We are only, what is this, the 23rd, so we're only eight days into um, this thing called 2013. Praise the Lord. Um, but I really believe that, um, and we have children's ministry available for the children this morning. So if we have children um, here today, um, they have wonderful um, teachers. Um, I mean, wonderful. A lot of them be ministered to at on their level. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They still give them the word, but they are enjoying. Hallelujah. My kids, oh my God, they get upset if they're not children's church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, y'all don't want y'all don't want to hear your daddy preach. They say, you are alright, but we with you seven days a week. I love how children tell you the truth. Hallelujah. All right. So if the children are here and you want them to be ministered to on their level, please allow them to uh so take up that ministry. We have wonderful teachers, Sister Teal is a wonderful coordinator of that. Hallelujah. Um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful person. Um, coordinate that effort. And I think today, Sister Barley um, is teaching the class today. God is good. Hallelujah. But we only have eight days left in this year, and I believe that uh, oftentimes we don't, uh, I've already heard people talking about resolutions going into the new year already talking about um what they're going to do in january february and uh, are talking about things that they're gonna, not going to carry into uh, the new year things of that nature but i don't want you to miss the opportunities that's still here in this year uh, because in order to go to the other side you got to make sure your business is straight on this side hallelujah um if you if you will um, if you're going to exit over to the other side, you got to make sure everything is finished on this side. Praise the Lord. So there's some things that we must, must make sure that we have straightened in 2012 before we go into 2013. Praise the Lord. Because uh, any uh, unfinished business that goes over there with you is still unfinished. That's why it's called unfinished business. Um, right now, uh, this world is talking about... Uh, Right now, you have the issue with the president and the Congress fighting over this thing called the fiscal cliff, praise the Lord. And they have a timeline that if they don't deal with it by the 31st of December, it's going to carry over into 2013. And there are going to be issues that are going to be awaiting all of us in some form or some fashion if they don't resolve it over this side. Praise the Lord. And I know that uh, politically, uh, many of you are on one side or the other, but the bottom line is, they need to get it resolved when? Now. Resolve it right now because it's harder to undo uh, more theater later on than it is to do it in the season to which it's supposed to be done. And you, you ever noticed in your life, praise the Lord, um, that you feel uh, kind of weird um, taking care of something out of season? Praise the Lord. Uh, I remember um, as a kid growing up, I really didn't ever want to be in the house. I always want to be outside. I want to be running and playing or whatever. And whenever we did come inside, they told us, get back outside. Hallelujah. Go back outside. Go back outside. So we stayed outside. Um, praise the Lord. But I have a hard time seeing someone who's clearly uh, mature in their age, but dressing like they, uh, you know, praise the Lord. I seen a gentleman yesterday. I said, come on, man. You know, 
He looked at me. He was trying to look. His son was with him, man. He was trying to be hip like his son, praise the Lord. I guess, you know, that's what he was saying. And I'm not saying you're supposed to get old. That's not my point. Uh, but, I mean, the brother, the daddy was 68 and the son was 38. And I couldn't tell the difference by the way the daddy was acting. Praise the Lord. You know, he had on everything but a, but a, but a pamper. Praise the Lord. <laughs> In other words, when something is done out of season, it allows, uh, praise the Lord, things to not flow and coordinate like it should. There are things that should be done in a season, praise the Lord. Your life is seasonal, praise the Lord. When God created you, he already knew up front how much time he would extend you on this side, praise the Lord. And so therefore, uh, ultimately, if we are wise at all, we would deal with things in their proper season so that we can enjoy the full benefit of the season to which we are in. Praise the Lord. Um, one of the challenges that many people face, and we've all faced it, is the challenge of trying to redo the past. Praise the Lord. Um, oh, I wish I would have done this, and I wish I hadn't have done that. Praise the Lord. And you're trying to undo things, um, but the past is exactly that, the past. There's no way that you can undo anything. The best way to not have to constantly regret your past is to do something with your present. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor the best way, the best way to stop regretting your past regretting your is past. to do something with your present. Hallelujah. I am not worried about stuff that happened five years ago. I'm not worried about stuff that happened five months ago. I'm not even worried about something that happened five days ago. Because there's enough that I got to deal with in this particular day that I believe it, it requires all of my attention and all of my energies. And so therefore, uh, if you're constantly living in regret about something that has happened in the past, then you don't enjoy the thing that's called present. And so what you end up doing is creating a cycle where you're always living in this thing called regret. You're always thinking about what you could have done and what you should have done and, and so think, so forth and so on. And you end up walking around in this life and you're really not that happy to be around, praise the Lord. Because I'm going to tell you something about people. Uh, the hardest people to deal with are people that are unhappy with themselves. Uh, when you're around a person that they're always regretting and upset about something in the past, it's really hard to deal with them. You dealing with something that's right now and they still stuck in something that happened to them 10 years ago, praise the Lord, they're going to be hard to deal with. Why? Because you are being attacked sometimes about something they've gone through in their head and, yes. and praise the Lord, you're dealing with something right now and they stuck with something that's way yonder, praise the Lord. But if we would all consider what God is requiring out of us right now, praise the Lord, then come tomorrow, we don't have to regret the decisions we've made today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The reason I'm saying this is this. When, when, we, when we talk about uh, going into another year, most people, again, they front load all the things that they wish they had done, and they pile up a long list of things that they want to accomplish. And what you end up doing in most cases, you end up failing yourself. Why? Because you've loaded yourself up with a whole bunch of lofty things that you know you won't accomplish because you haven't put things into place to have them accomplished. Praise the Lord. I think in order for us to really get the most out of a new year, praise the Lord, is to make the most out of each day. Praise the Lord. The Lord showed me that. He said, you know, don't give me 20 goals that you're going to give for me, exactly. that you're going to do for me. Praise the Lord. God told me this. Don't tell me 20 things you're going to do for me in the next, uh, praise the Lord, 12 months because unless you're sitting there and you wrote it down and you're in front of it every day, you're not going to do it. How about this? Tell me 20 things you're going to do for me today. Praise the Lord. And start checking it off your list every day. Praise the Lord. And by the time the year is up, you would have done more for me than making a promise over a year's time. Praise the Lord. When you need to start with smaller pieces that you can accomplish. Praise the Lord. In other words, uh, when, we, when we live our lives and we say, Lord, uh, by the time that I'm 55, I'm going to do blank, blank, blank. You're not going to do blank, blank, blank until you start learning how to do those things daily. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I had a lady tell me one time that when God blessed her and gave her a certain deliverance, she was going to do this with it, and she was going to do that with it, and she was going to do this with it, and she was going to do that with it. And so I asked the question, how much of that are you doing right now? You're waiting until later to do certain things when if you are serious about doing these things, you start it on a daily, daily basis. In other words, part of the reason why I can come in on a Sunday morning and shout because I'm shouting on Monday. So you know, part of the reason I can come in here and run because I'm running in my house on Tuesday. I know it ain't no sanctuary in my house but the sanctuary is wherever God is. Praise the Lord. And God visits my house. Praise the Lord. Uh, 
God, hallelujah. The reason I can pray, hallelujah, if I show up here on Sunday, because I'm going to pray during the week, hallelujah. The reason why I can lay hands on my job, because I've been laying hands all week, praise the Lord. I tell your neighbor, do it on a daily basis. Whatever you do for the king, do it daily. Hallelujah. As you, as you write your goals for yourself, bring it down to a daily level and you will find yourself getting used to it and it becomes a habit for you. And so therefore, when you have a larger assignment, you're able to handle it. Why? Because you're able to handle it on a smaller level. Praise the Lord. Amen. Break it down. Tell your neighbor, break it down. Sorry. Break it down. Hallelujah. Uh, up here today, where we heard praise team ministering so beautifully, and the sisters came up after them and ministered so beautifully. You can tell these people have rehearsed together. Hallelujah. They don't get together, praise the Lord. Oh, we got to sing over at uh, Restoration this morning. Um, let's get in the hallway. You hear them going, do, 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 it can sound so beautiful and God can get in the gift he's already given them and get glory and they can elevate everybody, praise the Lord, in the room. Tell your neighbor, do whatever you do for God. Do whatever you do for God. Daily. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there's a reason I'm going there with this is because uh, one of the things that you will find in uh, many of the songs, which I love the songs, is because uh, they speak of personal stories that individual characters uh, have been through, hallelujah. Uh, you can always find yourself in the Psalms, praise the Lord, because uh, there are people in the Psalms that have had to need God for major deliverances when they were dealing with a variety of issues, hallelujah, dealing with external foes, dealing with, uh, hallelujah, uh, countries even, if you will, or tribes or villages, praise the Lord, that were after them to try to kill them, praise the Lord. And, then, and there were times in the Psalms where they were dealing with internal, praise the Lord, adversaries, adversaries that are in their midst, praise the Lord. And I'm going to tell you right now, every enemy is not on the outside. There are enemies on the inside, praise the Lord. The devil is so cunning and so wise that he doesn't always bring adversaries externally because, hallelujah, uh, you can deal with an enemy on the outside because you know that's an enemy, but when they come closer to you, praise the Lord, and you realize it's still the enemy, then you really need to get to a place where you have a God that's bigger than every adversary, and he is on your side. Be, be smiling at your neighbor and say, I'm so glad he's on my side. I'm so glad he's on my side. That I don't have to lose sleep over what people do to me. Okay. Some of y'all ain't said that. But some of y'all still losing sleep over folk. <laughs> but tell your neighbor, get some sleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Give yourself, give yourself a weekly resolution. Get some sleep next week. Tell your neighbor, I command you to get some rest this week. Oh, boy. See, that's a message right there. <laughs> That's a message right there. Tell your neighbor, go to me. Go to me. All right. Okay. This is, this is critical for your development, saints of God. You must understand that God did not show up when you got in trouble. God did not appear when you got in trial. God did not show up because you got sick in your body. God did not show up because you had somebody that did not like you. God did not show up because you had a problem you couldn't deal with. God does not show up because you got people getting on your nerves. God does not show up because you got a demon on your job. God does not show up because the person looked at you the wrong way and you think they're mad at you and they think about you. When God decided to have a relationship with you, he started at birth. You came to knowledge of God at some point, but God didn't come to knowledge you when you acknowledge him. He already knew you. Why is that important? Because just because you don't see your way doesn't mean God haven't already made the way. Just because it appears that you are losing doesn't mean you are losing. Matter of fact, I know some people right now going through hell like crazy, but all I see is victory. What 
they they'll see it, but all I see is them coming up and they say, but you don't know how I feel. I don't need to know how you feel. I know how you're gonna end up. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I know that's right. I know that's right. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming up. I'm and I'm gonna be better than ever. Be better than Matter of fact, just shake that person's hand and say, I'm going better. I'm going higher. I'm going deeper. And I'm getting, oh my God, I'm improving all the time. Oh man, say it again. I'm going better. I'm going higher. Hallelujah. And I'm improving all the time. Oh my God. See, you, you must have the holistic knowledge of God to believe that. Whenever you try to minimize God and put him only in this circumstance, you have small, you have made God too little. Uh -huh. Are we true when we believe that God knows everything? Jesus. Yes. Are we true when we believe that God has all power? Oh, Jesus. Are we true when we believe that God is faithful? Yes. Yes. That if that is so, that when you wake up in the morning, you ought to be like the song. When I rose this morning, I didn't have no doubt. Yes. When God closes that way, doesn't mean there is no way. When God allows somebody to get on your nerves, it does not mean that all of a sudden God has lost his power. Be with that your neighbor say, God hasn't lost any power. God has lost any power. <sighs> Look at him real good, said, none at all. None at all. Smile and real good and say, did you hear what I said? Shake your head and say, did you hear what I said? God have not lost no power. Point your finger at him. Point your finger at him. See, see, y'all see. Y'all trying to be nice because y'all in the church. Do what you do at home. Point your finger at him and say, God have not lost no power. Stop all that complaining and murmuring. This particular song is attributed to David. Praise the Lord. I, I, you know, some of y'all restoration know I love three biblical characters. Of course, I love Jesus, hallelujah, he's the best there ever is. But I love Peter and I love David because, see, they, 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 they have in their lives the hills and valleys that most of us have in our lives. Praise the Lord. If you find a biblical character like David who you find him walking in his kingdom anointing, where he's had, he's, 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 he's killing the life, hallelujah. A giant, a monster that everybody else is afraid of, and yet he walks up and says, look, I'm not worried about this uncircumcised Philistine. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, he's killing giants. He's killing bears. Praise the Lord. You, you, know, you, you follow what I'm saying, y'all? You know, you see David, hallelujah, hallelujah, going and getting the ark of God back to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You find this man at the highest of heights earthly that you could ever imagine. Praise the Lord. But then you also find David in the lowest of the lowest valleys. Hallelujah. You find him in a predicament, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where he has uh, gotten a man killed. He has, oh my God, impregnated someone who is not his wife. Praise the Lord. You find him, oh my God, getting pursued by his spiritual father. Yes. You find him, hallelujah, almost dead, hallelujah, in so many instances to where you see him at the highest height, but you see him also at the lowest of low. And you find something here. You find that no matter which way David was, there is always God intervening and dealing with David whichever way he was in. Praise the Lord. Yes. And this is why, oh my God, you have to understand this about God. God, hallelujah, uh, doesn't turn his nose up if he's going to the valley to visit you. Somebody need to hear that. Because just because folks stop talking to you because you got in trouble don't mean God has. Oh, oh, hear a pin drop. Because y'all have, a, people have a tendency to believe that that's when they know God is on your side. Because everything working well, so oh, God is in it, so everybody want to come shout with you then. But sometimes, you got to go ahead and trust, you got to put some faith out there. You need to say, look, come down here in the basement and shout with me. I'm not even say it over here. Come down here in the basement. We're going to shout, but we're in the basement. Can you come to the basement and shout with me? Everybody wait till you get to the palace. Hallelujah. But by the time you get to the palace, I don't need no cheerleaders. The palace comes with no. All right. This 
David is, is critical for all of us to understand because, notice this now, God so honored David that he said, I am going to become savior through his bloodline. I am going to ensure that I am going to be of his lineage when I make my entry into the earth. Then that's all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When Jesus says, I, he says, I'm going to come through 42 generations, but I'm going to come through your bloodline. Oh, my God. That's how much he has honored this man. And, and you know, on one hand, you say, well, could God, is God taking down, praise the Lord, because he works with a man who has many flaws. Many flaws. And everybody in this room got flaws. Yes, yes. Really, that's, that's really the only way you really know your friends. You don't know your friends because they love you when you all together. You know your friends when they love you when they see your flaws. Yes. Some of y'all look and say, I don't have many friends then. That's why some of you got so many fake friends because you never show your real self. Uh, so they thinking you this way when they re don't realize that you really, really have a problem on your hand. And, and see, then when folk forsake you, hallelujah, they leave you to hang out to dry. It's because they don't have that kinship with you to know that if you are a friend, the Bible says a friend loving that all the time. Uh -huh. So David must have understood how it feels to be king but yet at the same time how it feels to be a pauper it's so critical that in your life if you are with God God is going to allow you to have experiences that are contrary to who what to what God have called you to be there are some of you in this room God have called you to be the head and not the tail but at the same time you are walking in your tailship so that when your headship comes, you'll know how to act. Say so. Say so. You'll know not to hold your head up against other folk because you got chose and they're waiting on theirs. You don't walk past them like, uh, well, I'm blessed and highly favored. And, uh, if you get like me, you'll get your The blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. How many people in this room know if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't be here today? I need at least three of you to clap your hand and say, I'm not all that. God is just so good. If I could get five of you to clap your hands and say, I'm not all that. God is just big killer. So David helps all of us understand that even though you are in a valley, it's temporary. Even though you are got your head hung low, you need to get something on your inside. Like David said, and hope thou in God and pick your head up and know that God is able to bring you out of a crooked place and make it straight for you. Smile as your David said, I know that's right. Praise the Lord. A lot of the other Psalms. Hallelujah. You talk about Psalm 23. You talk about Psalm 34. These were Psalms written in which there was a specific instance in mind. Praise the Lord. The writer is talking about a certain deliverance. Hallelujah. When he talks about Psalm 23, he talks about a time when he barely came out alive again. Saul had tried to get him. Praise the Lord. And this is why the words of the Psalm are there. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will not fear no evil. I know Saul trying to get me, but I'm not afraid of him. Praise the Lord. You, you just can't be scared right now and think you're going to give God no glory. I, I, you need this praise the Lord. If you want to get rid of anything, get rid of fear, praise the Lord, because that's the one thing that God can't get no glory in. Uh, hallelujah. Can you can you come right to the cliff with God and say, Lord, I thank you, because if I fall over, you know how to catch me in the air. Oh. I'm talking to some faith people. Let me come over here. Anybody believe God and even though you're walking over the cliff, praise the Lord, and you just trust God and say, Lord, before I fall to the ground, you got me. And if I fall to the ground, you'll make the ground not hurt me like it should. This, this is David's testimony that sometimes up, sometimes down, almost level to the ground, but somehow some way I always come back. Yes. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, grab your own belly and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
David and the other Psalms were talking about uh, specific deliverances. Praise the Lord. He had it in his mind. Praise the Lord. In Psalm 23, it just come out of running and getting away from Saul. Praise the Lord. And, and after going through it over and over again, he pins the words that we hear in Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. In other words, he stands right in the face of opposition to say, no matter what is happening to me, praise is going to continue to be on my lips. Praise the Lord. Don't you know life is going to come after you when you're going to have to prove those words out of your mouth? There's a time when you got to say hallelujah when you don't feel it. There's a time you got to say, Lord, I bless you. At the same time, you say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing, but I bless you anyway. There are times in which you got to be able to pray for people that's trying to hurt you. You got to sometimes lay hands on people and command them to be healed when they get on your nerves. There are times in which you got to love folk even though they ain't loving you back. So he says, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. But tell your neighbor, but this song. But this song. Look at your neighbor and say, but this song. This song is not about a specific case to which he is dealing with God who have delivered him. This is a totality song or, or a song of, oh my God, of the big picture song where David is just talking about how good God been to him over the, over the fulfillment of his life. In other words, he's not talking about, Lord, you delivered me out of this or you delivered me out of that. What he is saying is, when I consider all of it, when I look at the whole big picture, I to be able to say that you have been on our side. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I can't think of just one thing God has done for me. I'm looking at the whole picture and I'm determined that somebody bigger than me, somebody greater than my mama, somebody greater than my daddy, somebody greater than the short man preacher to me, somebody greater than the apostle, somebody greater than the prophet, the bishop, hallelujah, the evangelist, somebody greater has been on my side. He's not talking about one case. He's not pointing to one instant. He is looking at the totality of his life. And he has made the determination that somebody has desired me more than I have desired that somebody. Somebody has loved me more than I have loved them. Somebody has loved me more than I love myself. Somebody is helping me more than I'm helping myself. Somebody, somebody, somebody. Oh my God, look at your neighbors and I know who that somebody is too. Hallelujah. Oh, when you look at your darkest hours, and when you look at days in which you say, Lord, hallelujah, I don't care if I wake up in the morning. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever been there? We said, the Lord, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I'm okay with it. Anybody ever been there? Praise the Lord. Your body been in so much pain. You said, Lord, if I don't wake up, I'm good. Praise the Lord. Ah, uh, better yet, your heart has been so in much pain. You've been hurt so much. I'm talking about hurt from your inside of your inside on the inside of your inside. And you said, Lord, if it's possible, hallelujah, let me go to bed and just sleep it away. Oh, you ain't got to be deep. I know some of you in the room. When you said, Lord, if I could just sleep it away. And when that would work, some of you popping pills, trying to get 12 hours of sleep. Say, Lord, hallelujah, I'm about to get in trouble real quick. Some of you getting stuff out of a bottle. Hallelujah. And you can't drink too much of it and dry. And he said, Lord, baby, this will help. And then some of you put some stuff in your nose. Hallelujah. And then some of you had some people in your bed. Oh, I can talk about it because the children ain't in here. Some of you put some people in your bed that shouldn't have been in there trying to deal with the pain that's on the inside of you. Oh, yes. You had some conversations you should have had. You hugged on some people you shouldn't have hugged. You loved on some people were well, lusted on some people you shouldn't have lusted on. All of it trying to deal with this thing on the inside of you until you came to the knowledge that you didn't need a man. You didn't need a woman. You didn't need medicine. You didn't need the alcohol. You didn't need any of that. There was somebody who was waiting in line and said, are you finished? Are you still drinking it? Are you finished? When you get them out of the bed and you have done what you had to do and finish your business in the bed, you look at them and say, is that all there was? Oh, see, y'all ain't done. I'm coming down the road, but I know you're in the road because the Spirit told me to get in here. Hallelujah. When are you going to realize that nobody loves you like Jesus? When are you going to realize that can't nobody rock you like Jesus? Can't nobody love you like him? Can't nobody hold you? Can't nobody rub your hair and touch your ears and hold your hands like the master? Say, never have you ever made love to the master? Ha! 
we have, you see? Because you don't fell in love with people. You don't fell in love with your money. You don't fell in love with your job. You don't fell in love with these things. And when those things fall short, then you come up empty. But when you know that 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 you've been knowing that somewhere on the inside there's a God that's living in there that got in there at birth. When your mom and your daddy came and got together, they brought you out. Hallelujah. And there's some of us who are product of a broken home and God was still in it. My mom and daddy broke up the minute I was born, but it didn't make no difference. God said, I'm going to get him here some kind of way. And some of you, your mom and dad was married, and the life, the household was still broken. Oh, see, let me hide. They won't happy, so it might as well. Let me hide. I got in trouble, y'all. Jesus, praise the Lord. And so David here is talking about the totality of his life. You've got to look at the big picture. You've got to be able to look at your life in the grand scheme of things. And if you look at it that way, you can look at today's problem and not look at it and say it's not all that. I'm 38 years old and counting. Apparently God has got some good things for me and I'm not going to let today's problem ruin my today's testimony. I'm not going to let today's issue rob me from living the life God commanded me to live. And if I got to live the life that God commanded me to live without some people then so be it. Some of you ain't say that. If I got to live the life God called me to live without some folks, then so be it. But I'm not going to live with no joy. I'm not going to live with no peace because it took too much for me to get it and I ain't going to give it up for nobody. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. Tell you that I've been through too much to have this kind of joy and I'm not going to let no demon or his grandma either take it from me. David looks at the totality of his life. You know, this is why when we when we read Psalms like Psalm 150, where he says, praise ye the Lord, praise him in his firmament of his power, praise him in the sanctuary. These are Psalms that he had written at the end of the thing. Praise the Lord. After looked at what God had done for him, after looking how Saul had tried to kill him, tell you they would try. But wasn't successful. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Some of you dancing today because that demon didn't get you. Hallelujah. Some of you shouting today because you know what the devil tried to do. But you got away. Some of you lifting your hands, giving them glory because you know it could have been the other way. And if we be honest about it, it should have been the other way. When some of you look at your life and you look at all some of the people that have been in your life that didn't make it and you're still here. You can look at your hands and say, Lord, how they've been through a lot, but they're still here. Hallelujah. When you look at your life and say, God, we've been through a lot together, but you're still here. Anybody in the room know what I'm talking about? You have to look at your life in the grand scheme of things and be able to look at it and say, you know what? If the devil really had his way, he'd have took me out in that problem. But I'm here to testify that they don't make a demon that can stop you when God is on your side. Be nice to your neighbors and they don't Make a demon that can stop me. Hallelujah. Look at somebody that said they don't make a demon that can stop me. Some of you ain't saying it because you're scared of the devil, but I, I ain't scared of it. I ain't scared of my hate. Some of you don't want to say nothing because you say, well, you better watch. I heard a lady say that to me one time. You gotta watch what you say to the devil. You know he got power. I said, wait a minute. I thought God had more power. Then the devil, praise the Lord. Well, you just got to be careful what you say, y'all. I say, yeah, I ought to be careful what I say. And if I can't trust.